I've been thinking on this for a moment and been it's like collecting even more evidence, more evidence to kind of um, prove the point. You know, I know there's many ones and ones that you don't check for the KJV, the King James Version. And we do, too, to a certain point, right, to a certain point. But in in diligent, you know, study to show ourselves approved and even with the textual analysis of like the Hebrew, the Koine Greek, you know, the Gutters in some instances, the Royal Amharic, even more often. We notice that the King James Version, does the King James Version make God the devil? I right? just to ask that question right there. Does it make God the devil? This is something that could be a series right here because it's pointing out something that I think most Christians, or at least Western Gentile Christians, you know, that's what we know in the Bible. When we talk about the Bible and what we know about the Bible, most of us, once lost, now found, the black sheep of the house of the Beta Israel over here in America and the Caribbean. When we talk about the Bible, most of what we know about the Bible, right, is based on the King James Version or other versions. Because even some of these new versions, they're like re kind of re-adaptation and maybe introducing some manuscripts that that were rejected sometimes they're looking at rejected manuscripts and some of them there's good reasons for that right and you can tell by all these different translations so when i'm looking at the other translations right now and this is not to condemn my you know the kjv you know but to look at it in reality you know because others will present this to us. And even if we were to say, well, let's look at the Hebrew. When we go into the Hebrew, I mean, and we're going to go into the Hebrew. But even before we so-called go into the Hebrew, as it were, we first have to just deal with what we call, from a Hebraic perspective, the Peshat. Peshat. Peshat is a word like the plain. The, you know, plain, the plain view. Like the basic view. Or we call sometimes, you know, going from low degrees to high degrees. So we look at the King James Version, or even on the podcast and to some of the brothers and, and the sisters, you know, that would prefer, you know, to hear us reading, you know, the scripture. We also prefer to hear y'all reading the scriptures, you know, because we still use Alexander Scorby sometimes. We like his his English reading, you know what I mean? But we're going to deal with the basic King James Version because that's what we know. That's where most of these questions you know, there's an atheist Bible. I think I talked about it previously, and it was maybe a couple of decades ago when I came across it, right? And I must admit, at first it was like atheist Bible, you know, you like what? But it was a, it was the spirit, the Holy Spirit for I, you know, that spirit of truth that said, well, if it's true, right, then it's true. If it's false, then you're gonna find out. And I was happy I was able to go up into that and also have the ability, what we call scripturally that, you know, that gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, the gift of tongues to be able to look at some of the other languages and even where the King James Version, I'll say allegedly, is translated from, you know what I mean? Allegedly, because now we got the information superhighway, you know, they will go to and fro and knowledge increase. So does the King James Version of the Bible make the God of the Bible, right? The devil, or seem like the devil, or at least, you know, a liar. <laughs> Not even at least, or a liar, so to speak. Right? Now, my, many ones don't even want to even engage this, but this is reality. This is reality. If it's, if it's true, then it's just true. doesn't mean the so-called God of the Bible is like the devil or is a liar. But we can see how a, a version, right, and a certain perspective, you know, to this whole thing can make it, make, make you believe, right? So there's some who, who are making believe, right, and made themselves believe. And if you only know how the King James Version, what other version do you have, right? So, for example, the Ten Commandments. Let's, let's give a case in point. Just, just a little example right here, a case in point, where it says, thou shall not kill. Right, because one say the Bible contradicts itself, and and they look at the translation and think that Moses motioned them, right, or ones from whatever they may think. We're not going into all the different theories, but just they'll say that they'll project on the past that that Moses and them were reading this, that that what he said actually was, "Thou shall not kill." <laughs> you know what I mean? 
And then people will look around in the Bible and find areas of the Bible where it's written, implied overtly, and even one might say covertly, that the God of Israel is either sending out the Israelites and the Israelites are going out and killing. You know, and there are many examples of that as well that can be pointed to. So they'll say, wait, how does God say over here, thou shall not kill, right? And then over here, he is allowing or ordering or ordaining my right, killing according to the translation or as it is written in the King James Version. Now, those other Bibles really are not even up on this argument yet, right? So we're not even getting into the other Bibles, right? Because most ones and ones don't really know the so-called other Bibles, right? As they know the King, the King James Version of the Bible basically one can say it built the Western Gentile world. <laughs> the Western, this world system, believe it or not, right, was built on, when we say the King James Version of the Bible, we're not saying from a religious perspective, but from an a intellectual point of reference to a translation of ancient high wisdom and culture. In other words, the King James Version of the Bible, you could say, was on a literary level is a very high thing. Even even on some levels, one would say above Shakespeare, but then ones would even go into the Bible and say, well, Shakespeare wrote it, and that's a whole other reason, not even to get into that. So we have Exodus chapter 20, verse 13, right? Exodus chapter 20, verse 13, right? And from the Hebrew, right, the Hebrew is, is very clear. Lo tinaf. Right, right, well, no, right, right, right here, 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 here. Let's bring this up. Bring this up right here. No, Tinaf, Tinaf, right here. Sometimes I'm looking at the trans. Let's bring this up so you can see this for yourself, right? Because that's actually, you know, that's actually, thou should not commit adultery, right? Adultery. Let's first of all bring up the, the Hebrew right here. Now, this is. Okay, you see, this is a study we was on right here. Return to that study right there. But the verse that we learned from Ecclesiastes was 7, 16, where it says, Be not righteous over much. Well, actually, it begins from verse, um, let's see, where, where does it begin right here? Okay, no, verse 16 and 17. Be not righteous over much, like over righteous. Be not righteous over much. See how they translate that? Over much. Sometimes we look at the context, the more force of it, the Hebrew be like, be not over righteous, right? Neither make thyself over wise or over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Wow, right? Why should thou destroy thyself? Or you see the destroy right here, we look at the Hebrew sense of it is be desolate. Why should you be desolate? You know what I mean? Because if you're over-righteous, over-wise, you're smarter than everybody, you're more righteous than everybody, nobody want to be around you. So you basically make yourself desolate. Or in a sense, it's destroyed because if you're living in a community, how are you going to live in that community if you're desolate? You know, like, 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 you know, excommunicated, so to speak, bring out a sense. Verse 17 says, be not over much wicked, right? No, it doesn't say over much. They didn't say wicked over much. You see, a lot of that's just translation, just to peep to ones the translation for lack of a better word the translation game right right so here it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish notice it don't say foolish over much it just says foolish period right why shouldest thou die before thy time so this was a reason meant because you know some ones and ones quoted that right there and we always like to get to the biblical point of reference so here let's put in our search thou might shalt right right let's put not right not kill you ever remember the Saturday Night Live that Eddie Murphy clip you know kill my landlord kill my landlord c-i-l-l -L, my landlord that might be before some of your time but it's, it's classic right there here we have Exodus 20 and 13 Right, 20 and 13. And then we have a repeat of this in Deuteronomy 5, 17. 
Now there's seven verses found in the King James Version, which has these four words in it. But these first two we're going to touch on here. So from Ha Torah, the actual words right here, because sometimes from the Hebrew to the English, there's when we look at the manuscripts, there's sometimes like a verse or more over in certain some areas. Here, this in the Hebrew is Lo Tirzah. Lo Tirzah. Lo Tirzah. Lo Tirzah. Lo Tirzah. Lo Tirzah. So let's bring this out right here. Compare the verses right here. So this is what we was looking at on phone offline now you can see where some of the newer bibles like easy english even has it more right and exact than the 1611 where it says you must not murder or don't murder now bbe you see where it says do not put anyone to death without cause right without cause let's scroll down here right you see isv international standard version even they have it better here notice it's the this design why do they have the Zane? I notice they have the Zane, the Hebrew letter Zane, right there. Is that the Zane verse? I have to check this out right there. But even they have, you are not to commit murder. And even though in, um, right, even though in, um, like, yeah, you're not to commit murder. Uh, even though in the ISV, okay, just want to get our train of thought. In the ISV, the ISV, there's other places where you'll see memes out there and studies out there where, you know, they make different changes, right, to the translation that is really off. They take out the, some say the deity of, of, of the Moshiach, Yeshua, Hanotri. You know, they do other little funny things and, and, and translate it in a funny way. And some people say going against the gospel and, the, you know, the revealed gospel over these past, you know, two days, or you could say 2,000 years, right? But being that as it may, and it's true that ISV, we can beat up on the ISV in a lot of other areas. They say, well, give the devil his due, you know, and the devil, you know, the word devil, diablos, that's a New Testament kind of sense. It's not really a Old Testament Hebrew stuff, but they actually use that in translation because it's ones in the so-called New Testament, Western Gentile Christianity. But even here, the ISV has it correct, you know, from the Hebrew, lo, lo, tirzach, lo tirzach, lo tirzach, right? You are not to commit murder. Right or know you the I speaking to an individual male, because here the law is given to Yisrael as one man. Remember in the the second book of Moshe, Exodus, it says that Yasharala Yisrael is his son. So he speaks to Israel, all men as one man, as one in the ancient times, one corporate body, right? One court corporate body so before they had this corporate law we see that's all based on the divine law right getting into you know the study here you are not to commit murder and that's actually right and exact that's actually right and exact but now here we have the kjv right here we have the kjv you shall thou shalt not kill thou right notice here's the word ratzach ratzach so when we ask the question, does the King James Version, KJV Version, make God the devil right? or a liar, a hypocrite? Because they'll say, look, here he says, thou shalt not kill. And then he's telling the Israelites over there to kill. Right? Remember the proper translation, and here we have to give this to the ISV. Even though, from our own study, King James Version is more accurate in many, many, many places, more so than the ISV, right? But, you know, what they say, um, the devil's do, you know, so to speak, they're the ISV. What does it say in the scripts that even the devils know that, you know, that the Shadim, they know that, you know, that God exists, that, you know, he is one and they tremble. What more do you do, O oh man? Just a paraphrase right there. Here we have the H7523, y'all. H7523. Ratzach. Ratzach. Or Ratzach. 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 Right? Ratzach. Ratzach here, the definition, BDB, Browns, Drivers, Briggs, bringing out 
very directly. What does Browns Drivers Briggs say? Browns Drivers Briggs says to murder. Then it says to slay. Then it has to kill. So it goes from the more direct, right, keeping it right and accurate to the other ways it might be said. You know how a lot of times people, people say, well, you can say this or that or next thing and try to make a lot of different words seem like the same word because we are under the con game of the connotation, the connotation in language. You know, the connotation is, well, how we take a word today. So when a lot of people be trying to dismiss, right, the etymology, whether of the Hebrew, the etymology of the English, or when we get into the real roots of it, they'll just go and look it up. Let's look it up in a dictionary. Webster's, Merriam-Webster's dictionary, or this dictionary, that dictionary. And most of the dictionaries are connotations. They're not really etymology. It's important to look at the etymological roots, Right? And also to understand how the con game has gone on. Because they convince you that what it's saying here is kill. And therefore, because you've been convinced and not even done as the Bible even says. And for those who are, you know, faithful and have a regard for the Bible, it says to study, to shew thyself approved. Because by saying and trying to argue, like if somebody says, well, God is, the God of the Bible is a liar. He's the devil, so forth and so on. Because look, over here he says, thou shalt not kill and over there, right? And then you're trying to now defend what you think, you know, have to defend God, right? But you didn't do what even God said, according to you and according to even I, if we regard what's written here in the scripture, to study to shew ourselves approved, right? And then we're going to argue with one out there. And then... When one like say us or others bring this, say well actually it doesn't say kill there. Lo tirasah is thou should not murder. You know what I mean? There is another word for what is it? Harag, harag, right? Harag mean to kill. Harag, right? Ratsah, ratsah means to murder. So what the what was the difference? You say well it's all the same. Murder, kill. You are playing semantics. No, we say Hak Adosh Baruch Baruch Hashem Shem the Shem, yeah the Shem or the same the Sem the semantics yeah the key and significant meaning of words words matter in the beginning was the word right you know the word was with Ha Elohim Ha Elohim and the word was Ha Elohim the Creator the blameless Creator so words do matter. Right? It's amazing how people will try to minimize the emphasis on what the words really mean. And also to point out how meanings of words have changed. That's why most people need a lawyer or an advocate. Right? Because the lawyer or advocate is trained in those nuances. Right? And therefore, you know, can better represent you because they understand it. If you see that's why a lot of people get into business and other things and you know, they they're not looking at the language. They're not looking at the what what they call it again? The semantics. <laughs> you know, the semant the legal semantics. Or we can even apply this medically too. Because even doctors and, and med medical people, people in the medical profession, you know, even pharmacists and all the rest of them, they use you know, the Greek and the, um, you know, the Latin root words. And these words, man, these words we, we kind of use too. Or we hear them. We may not really understand what they really mean. mean but we need maybe a lawyer, a, you know, attorney or somebody or a doctor to explain it to us. Right? So this is almost like what we are doing right here. Right? Because does the King James Version, right, make, right, Based on the translation, the translation does the translation can the translation make people believe? Yeah, it can make people believe that the so called God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrew, the Old Testament is the devil because they are basically giving a hundred percent of their faith, <laughs> right? They are believing, right, in a version translated by men, right, from other men that is said in the very version that's translated were inspired by God right and therefore what do they speak right even if you believe the New Testament was written in Greek it was written in Greek but not originally originally those were Hebrew Aramaic speakers but you should get as close to the original to understand the sense not the letter now I don't want people to think we're talking about the letter of the law 
We're not talking about the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. Why? Right? The spirit of the law. On the spirit of the law, we could say, thou should not kill. Right? And maybe one to one's understood that, well, kill here is not like somebody trying to, 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 to kill you or murder you. And you, defending yourself, kill them. So the blood guilt, even as the Bible says, is really on them, not on you. Right? Not on you, because you're defending yourself. That's why even in law, they have distinguishing, you know, um, distinguishing terms, right? They say either manslaughter, first degree, second degree, you know, willful, this, that. They use all these words. Why? To qualify it. And this is all based after studying and investigating, okay, what happened, right? So what happened here in the translation, right? It's like there's another area of scripture where we talk about the, the meat offering. Excuse me, the meat offering. Talk about the meat offering. The meat offering, actually, if you would study it even in the Bible and the Torah, it's actually a grain offering. So people will hear meat and think you mean flesh, or we say debtors. They think they mean flesh. But actually, the meat offering was a grain offering because they used the word about 400 something years ago. Back in them days, they used the word meat, not as we connotatively understand meat. See, they use meat for that which was edible, food, right? Whether it was flesh or not. But specifically, the meat offering, even in the Bible, is a grain offering, or what is called more properly a bloodless offering, right? So some things do get lost in the translation, and we're not implying any intent, you know, to deceive by the King James Version translator, because we don't know what the intent was. But what we do know by study is that this here is a poor translation, very poor. And this allows ones to be conned and connotatively to make believe that the so-called God of the Bible, right, or the God of the Hebrews, the Old Testament, the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, right, is actually the devil or Lucifer or whatever they want to call, right? Because we can't be afraid of these sort of areas, especially if we do the study, because then we'll see the evidence say, wow, this right here, you know, anybody and everybody who has done any real biblical study, right, on just the basics knows this, right? Now, maybe you've done some study and maybe you don't know this, but hopefully you get to know this now. That the word here, lo tirzah, lo tirzah, right, is thou shall not or know the I murder. Know you male murder, right? To murder, to slay. Now, I know they throw the word kill in there, but if you notice, even in the order of words, of entries, it's the last one. And they really should have thrown that one in there for quote. But let's go down right here. To murder, right? To slay, right? To murder, to slay, right? Like to murder, to kill. Like a, a killing can be either a murder, right? Or it could be self-defense. You see what I'm saying? But now if it's premeditated, what makes a murder a murder? What makes ratzah ratzah? It's the intention. Premeditated. Premeditated. Now here, some of the, you have to recognize some of the entries here, they say accidental. Accidental. You know what I mean? As an avenger. Right? A slayer. But see, where it says next to slayer, they put this in here. And they should put it in you know, um, with the other ones as well, the intent, intentional, intentional slaying, right? To be slain, and you see in the PL sense, these are the different senses of the Hebrew, you know, whether past, present, future, you know, whether it's in a passive sense, whether it's in a reflexive sense, or whether it's in an intensive sense. Here, we have the PL sense, PL sense, which is to murder or assassinate. That means premeditatively, right? Now, when he said to be killed, that's a kind of a poor entry there. It's really to be murdered, the puao sense, to be murdered, right? Now, we get to the Strong's definition as a comparison here. We use these two to kind of balance out, right, and to um, find the truth for ourselves here. Secondarily, the Strong's definition of primitive root properly is to dash in pieces, right? That is, they say, kill a human being, but you see what it says, especially, especially to murder. So sometimes the, the, 
the um, definitions because they already recognize what the prevailing translation is. They don't want to really, you know, do due diligence, but they will put the truth there. But sometimes they'll put the lie also on the side. It's not really to kill in that sense, only euphemistically because so many people have gotten used to the KJV version over the past 400 years, right? And they basically, you know, there's that, that, that gray area. Is it to kill, kill, or to kill in what sense? And if it is, thou shall not kill, then how in the world is this same, you know, Elohim, Right, the Elohe Yisrael, the Elohim of Israel, then telling them to go and to and to kill, right, or to to put others to death. Isn't that violating his own law? Well, that all depends on your point of view, right? Whether you are deep ending on the KJV. So in these cases, through due to a poor diligence, right, on behalf of especially the Christians or those who who approach this from the faith, you know, the faith perspective. I'm not going to use the, the, the B word in that sense, right? Except maybe in be lie Eve or, or be live or admit as truth within this scripture, right? Really justly, right? Quote, unquote, some might say religious or from a spiritual perspective. The NET of the Bible, right? The NET of the Bible, you, you shall not what? You shall not murder, right? You shall not murder. The NHEB says, do not, well, okay, the, you see how they, they confuse it because of the, the difference in numbering. You see how the LXX right here? Oh, is this forneu, forneu, forneu says, forneu say, forneu says, oh, forneu says. That's the, the LXX and the LXXA. That's the one that has like the apocryphal books in it and stuff like that, right? But the N-H-E-B is looking at the Hebrew numbering in that sense, right? But here we have the Tanakh that has the lo tirzach, lo tirzach, thou shalt not murder, right? Thou shall not murder. So here, King James Version, thou shall not kill. For today's understanding, Right, where we have the ability to go to and fro, like Daniel's prophecy says, you know, modulation, demodulation, so they shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase. I see that as a divine pointing to even the technology, right? Modulation, demodulation, but the whole internet, you know, knowledge can increase. You know, we really need to upgrade this and need to put ones and ones in on the know that this is a mistranslation thou shall not kill right? thou should not kill because we hold to that even with the better information even knowing knowing more growing in grace right and the knowledge in growing in grace and the knowledge we have to put this in its true light for today for now however they saw it back in the days is however they saw it back in the days but when we read this thou shall not kill you know what i mean and then we look elsewhere where it speaks about killing, right? Even killing that might seem to be authorized by the, and the translation, God, Lord God of Israel, right? It does put the God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrews, and El Elohe Yisrael, you know, in a, you could say, a bad light, you know, based on the translation. Because how do people know anything else about God of the Bible when they try to verse us on this oh god is the devil because look what he does he says don't kill over here and then the israelites are killing let's put it into context because notice modern law aren't well i'm not saying you but one should be happy that they do make this distinction isn't there a distinction even in modern law between killing and murder right now they might not use those words plainly but they use other things like um you know, justifiable, <laughs> homicide. They use these words like homicide. You know, what's that? It's going back to the um, homo seed. That will be um, going back to homo side, the, the Latin, you know, the Latin roots. So see how even they go back in the English, they go back to either German sometimes or back to the Greek or they go back to the Latin to clarify things. And notice that in law, 
right, in law and in medicine and science, they use these particular terminologies that derive from, right, the very same language of the Bible, but then ones and ones who are so-called into the Bible will become bibliolators, like idolater of a version of the Bible, a bibliolator, right, even when it's clear that certain things, right, are not right and accurate, you know? You shall not murder. This is the correct Hebrew sense of it, right? So some of the Bibles do have this verse correctly. We're not going to try to justify the other Bibles, neither throw shade on other areas where the King James Version of the Bible does bring out the original sense much better than many of the other versions. But unfortunately, fortune or not fortune, Fibona Fortuna, right? That's a false god of the other nations, fortune. Think about that. But sadly, right? Uh, it's not an emotional thing. It's not a feel say thing. But just what it is. You shall not murder. Thou shall not murder. Or, a little more better, Lo Tirzach, you shall not commit murder. In other words, it should not be an intentional, premeditated killing. Right? And holding hatred, notice this right here, holding hatred against another, right? holding hatred against another in many cases would cause the investigation of a crime. Like if one killed one, like they, as in the Torah thing about two men in the field and they work in chopping wood or whatever and the axe hand, head, head flies off and hits the other man in the head. Right now, Ha Torah, it says that in such cases, the blood avenger is the next of kin. Did you know that? The blood avenger. It wasn't like today where, you know, um, you know, if somebody, you know, killed or murdered, rather murdered somebody in, amongst us, right? We have to then allow the state to handle everything. That is not how in the ancient times it was regulated. And even in Ha Torah, in the Torah given to the children of Yisrael out of Mitzrayim, Samai Tawi, the two lands, we even have this ancient cultural, ancient people thing where there is the principle of the blood avenger, the avenger of blood. That would be the next of kin, right? And because that was known, and Yahuwah does not say, well, y'all shouldn't be doing that. But in fact, one could even say that he may have ordained that based on Ha Torah and what was said to Noah, no Noah, Noah, what was said to Noah, you know what I mean? Where it says that, um, you know, how you require, like, you know, the blood, you know, the blood by man's hand, you know what I mean? Because... And then what's wrapped up in that, let's get this right here. What's wrapped up in that is um, the reason, the reasonment of it. So this principle of a next of kin, right, to the person who was killed slash murdered. But there was an injustice that was going on. See, but there was an injustice in that. So Yah did not do away with the custom of the people that obviously Yahweh Eloheinu saw was right and justified and in compliance with even his will and his way. What are we pointing to right here? What we're pointing to right here is Genesis. When we look at Genesis, in Genesis chapter 9, right? This is where it says that Elohim blessed Noah and his sons. All right, so all the sons were blessed. He said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Hail up to I and I co um kind of co host on some of these uh uploads, uh Ross, Seymour, you know what I mean, the just vibes and you know, because that verse right there, we see that in Genesis chapter one. But what's interesting is that Adam and Eve are not told this. We'll pause on that right here until we get on, you know, get on the reasonment right here. But it was a reasonment. I think we should if we haven't, then stay tuned. But here in Genesis chapter 9 at verse 2, 
right well let's go let's scroll down to the heart of it at verse 4 right where it says not to eat blood and then it goes to verse 5 and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it now let's go here just to put this into context now here's the Hebrew view of the ancient times now of course different cultures you know have their you know um, not just belief but their interpretation of the common reality right when we start to now do critical ancient textual analysis you know some say well this one got it from that one and that one stole it from that one we do not by actually studying the text we don't really see it like that you know all we see is that there was a common denominator right and in this common denominator there's a verse right there in this common denominator you know like we all experience something our ancestors all experience something right but then your ancestors communicated the wisdom of that like that right and then the next one's ancestors like that and then our ancestors like this so we're pointing to the torah in this context genesis bereshif chapter 9 verse 5 what do we have here Right, what do we have right here? We have, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. What's so interesting about a true context of this, and this is a little bit outside of it, but it's also important to note it. In verse 3, it says, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat. Right, and the word meat is okla. Okla. What's okla? Okla. Okhla or okla is food, right? It's food. So what shall be food? It says every moving thing. It says even as the green herb or the vegetation, right? Even as the esep, right? The vegetation have I given you all things. Now there's a lot of reasonments that can be had and has been had on that particular statement there. But let's move forward. Verse 4. But flesh, uh-oh, it's on the flesh, right? But flesh brings up in the Hebrew basar right the basar in the Hebrew flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall y'all not eat so here's a principle that is also universally almost universally acknowledged even in other ancient tribes and traditions of other peoples right that the life of the flesh or the body right is contained in the blood therefore the phrase bloodshed right and the shedding of blood and also because it could be a killing or a murder there is the shedding of innocent blood so there's a general principle of the shedding of blood and then the shedding of innocent blood verse 5 now brings us right here right it says y'all shall not eat right so before this what is being put forward is that from the beginning to the time of Noah, that it was commanded right to humanity the human being the so-called homo sapien sapien if you want to call it so right to eat of the vegetation right but now with the noah the covenant of noah and this is what connects with the noahide noahide according to the scriptures the, the noah laws noahide laws here now it is being um some say as a concession to man's weakness as a concession to the nephilim involvement in corrupting humanity and man already had got a taste of debtors he got a taste of the flesh so to speak so here's something very interesting right where it's now saying to the survivors who are going to read people and populate according to ha torah that now you're going to be allowed to eat flesh right to eat the debtors right but here's what it says and surely your blood of your lives will i require at the hand of every beast right will i require it and at the hand of man almost like blood for blood right shedding that blood is life right whether it's the blood of a beast right or it's the blood of a man whether it's the blood of a chai chayim chayim means to live Right, the chayi mean the living, the beast. Right, there's no word animal in the King James version of the Bible. You ever notice that? So somebody can say there's no animal in the Bible. People say, oh yes, there is, and they'll point to different kinds of what we call animals. But 
what's really being said is that literally directly in the King James Version of the Bible, it does not use the word animal, right? And behind the word beast is chai or chayat and the chayim, the living, right? At the hand of man, so both at the hand of every beast will I require a man go hunting after some animal. Sometimes the hunt actually is in favor of the animal, not always man. Check, right? At the hand of man, right? Will I, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man? So look at that right there. So here is something interesting putting into the context, right? So when I'm speaking about the blood avenger and the two men out in the field, right? And the axe head flies off. Now, one would say it's an accident, right? So, but you know, somebody has been killed by this. So one might think I'm going to go to the family and say, hey, you know, your loved one is dead, but it was an accident. You know, the axe head had actually came loose and, and it was really an accident. I'm really so sorry. You know, even if they did so, the close of kin, the near of kin, the blood avenger, right? If they killed them on sight after hearing what happened, according to the ancient law, even connecting with Genesis 9 and 5, right? And even ancient customs and traditions that also we find the Israelites shared in this common denominator, that person would not be wrong, right? Would not be wrong, right? We're talk about it, what happens in the streets. This was like the ancient streets. And this is a principle. So what we see in the Torah is a regulation of ancient custom and tradition, right? And in some cases, right, a total doing away with certain things based on the covenant, the Brit, right, of Yasharala with Yahuwah, right? So it says, at the hand of every man's brother. So see that principle? That's the blood avenger. So that man that was killed by the next man, but it was an accident. It was an accident. But what Torah says is you must flee to a city of refuge so that the blood avenger does not kill you. Right? See, you are seen in the eyes of the blood avenger as being the murderer. You see what I'm saying? In spite of your explanation, you know what they say, a crime of passion. So there's certain things that we can call crimes of passion. If you look at it as a crime, while from the ancient world, one would say, but he was, it was an accident. Yeah, it was an accident, but you know, it is what it is, right? And he who be who he be, <laughs> he be who he be, he regulated something for Israel where he said that in this case, you would have sanctuary cities, refuge cities, almost like the churches of the Levites where one can go to a sanctuary city and then there could be what will be a grand jury and investigation into the matter, right? And if it's found out that that one is innocent, that it was, a, 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 as they say, an accident, right? They must live in a city of refuge until the death of the Moshiach, the high priest, the anointed high priest, which is another interesting theme with Yeshua being our you know, high priest of our profession, you know, and him also being Moshiach, because the high priest was one of the few, right, along with the other priests who were anointed in the community. So that one would have to live in that refuge city, and the Torah furthermore states that if that one decided to leave the confines of the sanctuary and the blood avenger was to catch them on the road or wherever, it would be on site, and the blood avenger would not be guilty, because that one should have stayed in the refuge city. Now, of course, if the blood avenger says, I'm going to go in the refuge city, I don't care what the priests say, well, that one would be dealt with. And it might even extend to their family because that would be definitely a violation. You see what I'm saying? But then after the death of the high priest, that one could return and there should be no blood, right, for that. And if there is blood, one carrying a grudge that long, my, then there are stipulations in the hard Torah what would happen to that one and possibly to certain family members because that means that family should regulate them. You know what I mean? Be your brother's keeper, so to speak. Right? At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Then it goes into verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, 
by man shall his blood be shed. But now it gives a reason. The reason for this is, for in the image of Elohim made he man. Right? Because in the image of Elohim made he man. Now, this is our Hebrew point of view to a very ancient custom that we find, you know, the principles universally, but how people dealt with it was sometimes different. Right? So we both now see that this whole thing about killing, there's a distinguishing between killing in Ha Torah and murder. Right? And sadly, unfortunately, or for whatever reason it be, this did not come out in the King James Version of the Bible. You know, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 13 in the English. What is it to read? You shall not murder. And how is murder qualified? Oh, one more point, right? About the two men in the field. That's like what we call takeno, like a case study, for example. All, all, all is the ten words. Everything, the pure law is the ten words. Right? Everything is the ten words. We could just fulfill the ten words, as Gormawi Nagusanege says, the ten words. Right? It didn't have fulfill, fulfillment until Yeshua Hanotri. Did not really have that fulfillment right? until Jesus of Nazareth. Right? And this is why his master says his advice to all is to fulfill. But what, why all the rest? Because all the rest is case study. You know how people are. Thou shall not kill. You know, low tirsah. Right? People say, well, what do you mean by low tirsah? Well, what about this situation? What about that situation? So therefore, the rest of the what we have in Torah, right? Or in the Torah of Moses is commentary. It's like kind of a case study to give us a better context of this. So if the man who said the act had slipped off and hit the other man in the head killing him right in the investigation conducted by the shoftim the shotarim as well as the kohen gadol the, the anointed high priest if it turned out that this man had hatred had hatred in times past if he had hated him this is the key qualification to distinguish whether it's harag killing or it's ratzach murder Right? The way to distinguish this also during the investigation, the grand jury, right, on this this death, was this death a murder? Was this death an accidental killing? Was to find out whether there was enmity or hatred. Right? It's almost like nowadays and in other times people talk about, oh, I'm gonna kill you, I'll kill you, you better watch out, such and such. And now if the person that that person said they're gonna kill ended up dead, right? And we didn't know who it was, and the shoftim, the shotarim, the judges and the officers are investigating it, and then they find out that, well, you had said you were going to kill this person, and he better watch out, he's a dead man, dead man. You might well be charged with that on the principle of HaTorah, which is something, a very interesting reasoning in, in itself. Right? Doesn't mean that people didn't have disagreements so forth and so on. But you know how folks are. Even nowadays, they'll they'll do it on the internet. You dead, I'm gonna kill you, such and such. Right? That really there is basically admission to a crime. Right? You're gonna murder somebody. You know, so in the case of the accident, so it might have really been an accident. But this one expressed enmity and wanted this other man dead and just so happens that they both are chopping wood and just accidentally this person dies by them. We should believe, oh, he didn't really mean that. But all the witnesses said, yeah, he hated that man. He talked about how he wanted that man dead, so forth and so on. Basically, it would be passed over to the blood avenger. What do we mean by that? To the near of kin. Now, an interesting thing that's not going into much detail, and we're going to sum it up, you know, right here, here, here. An interesting detail is, what would happen if the near of kin decided they did not want to do this? We still had the judges and the officers, right? And the shotarim, right? The shoftim, the judges, and the shotarim, they were empowered in certain cases, right? You know, to judge on the spot. In some cases, there, some cases we have a grand jury, we have a court proceeding, we have like a trial. 
but in some cases of immediate like uckery or something like that they could execute judgment like Phineas did right they could execute judgment right on the spot you know what I'm saying but we thought about that because we said suppose one decided that they, they didn't want to carry it out there were others to carry it out but it's interesting as the first right to carry it out was the nair of kin right but it but it, it it could not be in Torah sense it could not be any long prolonged kind of a torture thing it was no thing like that you know what I mean like you want to make this person die slowly and to feel what your 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 relative no 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 because there's no way to really do that now I know ones and ones will say today well this is the new covenant and all that is no 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 you may not have read the New Testament very carefully or understand the groundation of it as Yeshua the Moshiach said have you not read what is written right lo tirzach right you shall not murder murder is murder did they kill Yeshua right Adonainu or did they murder him hmm <laughs> right did they which one was it it obviously was a premeditated so notice this that with Yeshua Hanotri with Jesus the Messiah here just for a little brief Hadasha you know application of the law right a little talking note here right it's who who's responsible right for what happened to Yeshua well we say Israel is responsible we are responsible right Israel is responsible but who is according to the narrative there in that scene right in that um, event horizon who was responsible right there? Well, the Yehudim, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the scribe, all those who was insulted because Yeshua called them out on their hypocrisy, right? On their playing, you know, fast and loose. They knew better, right? It was them, right, who were the, you could say, the murderers in that sense. They had the intent. They hated Yeshua. Right, and they hate the Nazarene, they hate I and I, even of the new name. So it was upon them, right, that the murder falls. Right, that's why they say his blood be upon them and their children. No, check, check. Right, you got to watch that blood there, that blood is on them. Right, and they un you, you have to understand in the context of what we just explained what that meant when they said their blood is upon them. Taken out of the new fangled Anglo, white Anglo Saxon Protestant pseudo Christianity thing and understand it in its true context, as Yeshua said, Right, ye worship that which you know not, we know what worship for salvation of the Yehudi, right? The Yehudi, right? So it was the Romans who were the killers, right? The Romans who were the killers right the Roman that's why that's why Pontius Pilate right who from the original ancient church view he was regarded as a saint because of how he repented and he forsook Rome afterward right you know to his own you could say you know to his own injury but you know anyone who follows Moshia also have to brace themselves to suffer different levels of affliction you know what I mean? It's that it's, it's that long game, so to speak. You know, a lot of Christians aren't told that. They told be happy, happy, joy, joy. But if you're in the real thing, you're gonna offend, you know, real people, you know, who are really wrong. Right? So you had the Pharisees and scribes, they were the murderers. They wanted him dead, but they had no power to do so. Right? And it was the Romans. Right, who were in power, they were the killers. You know, they went around doing that crucifixion thing. You know what I mean? That was their thing. That was how they, you know, these like state state crimes, crimes against the state, you know, crimes against Rome and all that, the Republic and all that shite. Right? So the um what's known as the sixth commandment, Lo Tirzah, you must not murder. You must not have a premeditated intent to take one's life or one's soul from them, to dispatch one's soul from this world, especially at the root of it is that hatred thing, based on hatred. You know, we go into a little more detail on that, but this is just a, bas a basic matter right here, dealing with the sixth commandment, right? You shall not murder, right? And the thou shall not kill is a relic of the times of the Gentiles. Right? You know, if the Western Gentile mind, 
But we have to get out of that Western Gentile mind if our claim is being Beta Yisrael, right? Yasharala. So, here, 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 brothers and sisters, could touch on some of these other related themes here. But, you know, just let's suffice it to say right here thou shall not kill, right? Is erroneous, right? This is an error. Thou shall not murder, right? Is what it truly says and what it should say. Right, make that update. Just mark that there. Strike the killing, strike the kill, and put murder. Right, lo tirzach, lo tirzach. Shalom, Habarim, shalom. This is Rasai Donis Safar, L O J S dot O R G. Here, Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Yisraelim. Yes, I, Rastafari. Shalom, Habarim, shalom.